CIET NCERT presents Raindrops Textbook in English for Class 1 Special Series About the Book The National Curriculum Framework 2005 suggests that plurality of textbooks is a necessary requirement for curricular freedom. A single textbook does not meet the expectations and aspirations of teachers and learners uniformly. The same idea has been reinforced in the focus group position paper on the teaching of English which suggests that the earlier practice of choosing from a range of available texts can be revived. It would be reasonable to expect that with a multiplicity of English textbooks, the diversity of English language environments in the country would be addressed better. A series of textbooks in English, Raindrops, for the primary stage class 1st to 5th has been developed. Keeping in mind first-generation schoolgoers as well as children whose only exposure to English is in school and even within the school, usually with limited time duration and constraints in quality. The criterion that we must meet is people's aspirations for their children. The spontaneous and appropriate use of English for at least everyday purposes, in other words, to speak English, as against merely passing examinations in it or knowing its grammar. The aim, therefore, is learners' exposure to the language, in this case English, in meaning-making situations so as to trigger the formation of a language system by the mind. Conventional textbooks presented the letters of the alphabet in the beginning itself in the A for Apple mode. This is no longer the case. Research on syllable recognition and letter sound correspondence have shown that exposure to a series of words focusing on a particular sound facilitates learning. We need to develop a focus in which the research on language learning is integrated with the language teaching. In this textbook, the alphabet is presented in two ways. 1. Letter Recognition The complete English alphabet, both small and capital letters, is presented at certain intervals. It has been given either horizontally, for instance, where a lesson ends, or vertically as a sort of add-on border to the lesson. These would indicate to the child the order as well as the number of letters in the alphabet, which he or she would glance at, perhaps trace with a finger, or simply chant along with others in the class. 2. Tracing the letters The letters of the alphabet have been grouped in such a way that the letters using the downward stroke such as D, T, etc. are in one group. The letters using curved lines such as C and O are grouped together. Each group of letters has been given at intervals throughout the book in dotted outline forms along with space for the child to practice further. There is no inherent contradiction in these two ways of presentation. The letter groups for tracing are based on the hand movement required. And the letter recognition indicates the alphabetical order of the letters, which is necessary for reference skills later, to look up dictionaries, directories and so on. A decision was taken to teach the lower case first, because capital letters account for only about 5% of the written word. Also, the lower case letters are the ones that children see more frequently in their environment. It is found that some children confuse between B and D. For in writing, B, the semicircle, comes on the right side of the vertical stroke. In D, the semicircle is on the left. A conscious attempt has been made to address this problem through illustrations. Four poems have been put in the beginning of the text. These are to expose the child to little songs and rhymes as they would have had in their mother tongue. As with rhymes for children everywhere, the sounds are the main focus in these poems and not so much the meaning. 
a deliberate decision was taken not to include any kind of activities or exercises with the first few poems. They are meant to be read for enjoyment only. Phonological awareness is the ability to discriminate between similar sounding words, the difference between gate and late, for instance. Since a child who is phonologically aware is more likely to have reading success, it was thought important to find ways of developing it. Most importantly, children would be encouraged to have fun and play with words. The present textbook is one step in this direction. Chapter 1 Page number 1 Clap, clap, clap Clap, clap, clap Tap, tap, tap Hop, hop, hop Stop, stop, stop Jump, jump, jump Run, run, run Clap, clap, clap Stop, stop, stop To the teacher Read out the poem Matching actions with words Make the children repeat the poem after you with suitable actions. 